All right. So um, we're close to break time. And uh, our next speaker is um, right here. We, the next session is going to be focused on product recommendation ecosystem on Kubernetes using Argo Workflow. And this is going to be taken by Osinachi. And um, Osinachi is a software engineer and technical writer building within the African tech ecosystem. Osinachi enjoys building solutions on Web3 and also extending the web, um, extending the web using web assembly. When Osinachi isn't coding, he enjoys reading books. Good to have you here, Osinachi. Um, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Anika. Hello, everyone. Um, so I ju I'll just get started immediately, right? Yes, yes, you can. Can you try sharing your screen? Let's see if it works. Okay. Right. Mark permission settings. Um, one minute. We'll be going on a very short break while Osinachi figures out the permission issues.
Oh hey, Austin actually. Are you ready to go? So, are you good to go? Yep. Yeah, I yeah. am. Can you see my screen? Alright. Um, let's get your screen on here. Yes, we can see that now. Alright. I'm hearing some background music, is it? Okay. Okay, I think so you're good to go. We're ready. All right. So, um, hi everyone. Um, today I'm talking about product recommendation system on Kubernetes using Argo workflows. All right. And yeah, just a bit about me. I love working with cloud native tools that pertain to um, data engineering and AI, All right? So uh, let's get to product recommendation. And um, you've probably heard of it, uh, maybe when you're using a website and you're scrolling infinitely and you keep seeing things being recommended to you, videos, maybe TikTok, um, you, you keep seeing a new, video being shown on your screen, right? So there's an algorithm working, working at the back to um, make this happen, right? So it's, we, we have recommender stems in a lot of places. I think most products, most modern products have one form of recommendation system on, or another because, because of the sheer amount of data present in these products. And, generated by users. Um, with these big companies that have these products want to um, make the want to make the most money, right? So they would want to recommend the product that user would likely buy or user would likely watch. But something that the user will want. Personalizing experiences basically. Right. So say you're like on Kunga. Kunga is like a market, it's like an e-commerce platform that is present in Africa, I guess. So, and you want to purchase, say, a modem or a MiFi, right? So if you scroll to the, the down, you would see similar products, right? So there are, there are different algorithms that are used to achieve this product recommendation. We could do it strictly based on visual similarity like you look at this one, if you look at this one, it's kind of similar to the one shown at the at the first two products recommended. Right? So if we use if we use strictly on we base our recommendation strictly on visual similarity, might not get the best results, right? But usually they use a combination of uh, a combination of um, of algorithms or a combination of methods to achieve product recommendation. Uh, but we won't be focusing on the query recommendation in this uh, in this talk, right? So this talk is about more about the pipeline that makes product recommendation possible, right? So why Kubernetes? Why not just do this product recommendation on a virtual machine somewhere? So training and serving is hard at scale. Right, training and serving machine learning models is hard at scale. I think that's the whole point of Kubernetes to be able to auto scale your um, containers or auto scale your yeah your containers basically when you need more more compute. Right, so if you're running a large e commerce business and say you're improving your product recommendation model every day. I, you would want to keep running the model maybe every day by 6, 8, 6 p.m. I don't know. And some days you might have um, more data coming into your app and other days you have less. So you want Kubernetes to control all of this. Yeah, so uh, what's this Argo workflows thing? So Argo workflows is, is um, a Kubernetes, Kubernetes native pipeline orchestra. Tool. Uh, what's that? So it's all about pipelines, right? So um, pipe, you, we see pipelines a lot when we deal with um, real world applications and deployments and stuff like that. So even 
the normal way we develop applications is using a kind of CI CD way, even if you're not using fully using CI CD or GitOps. Right. So if you commit some code, the code goes through several processes of building and testing until it's ready to be served to customers or the end users. Right. So it's a similar thing for machine learning pipelines. So you your data, you want to get your data from just a, from just data to a machine learning model that can be used in real world applications. Right. And it's all structured in a pipeline format. Right. So it starts from you preparing your data, no matter where the data is stored, whether it's a database or a file storage, right? Training, training a machine learning model on that data, um, testing the model, packaging it, deploying it, and serving it up. The whole, the whole, it's like a very similar pipeline to how you do with code, but in this case, it's machine learning models. So um, normally when you're developing a machine learning model, right? If you've worked with machine learning, if you work with data scientists, you'd see them using um, Jupyter notebooks or similar notebooks. Um, there are notebooks on like Colab, Cargo, notebooks everywhere, basically. So these notebooks will help them develop the, um, do their data cleaning and the whole thing that they do for making data ready and and making their model fit the data, right? But now we're talking about them moving away from these notebooks and moving to containers, right? But it's kind of still, it's just, it's similar, right? But in this case, work with their notebooks and commit their notebook into, say, a GitHub repo and we run a pipeline that can take their code, containerize it, and um, put it in a pipeline. All right. So let me go back a bit. So Argo Workflows it helps you think in terms of um, containers. You can use Argo Workflows for quite a number of things, not just um, machine learning pipelines. You can use it for data processing, for CI, CD, and a few other things. And so for machine learning pipelines, you like pre-process your data first, um, extract features, depending on the machine learning process you're using, sure. Right, so you don't like all these steps that you do in like the normal machine learning flow, you want to break it down into containers, right? And uh, connect those containers together. And if you do connect them together, you'd be able to I know you'll be able to get your machine learning model ready from start to end, right? So um, this is how you normally use Argo workflows. So you'd like de you deploy the Argo workflows um, on Kubernetes. Right? It's like a custom resource. It's like Kubernetes custom resource, right? You deploy it on Kubernetes, and you write your workflow in YAML. You can also write it in Python, then compile it down to YAML. Then you submit your workflow to Kubernetes, and Kubernetes starts the workflow. Right. So we're going to see that in a bit. So like, let's go back to our product recommendation. I, I mentioned the steps earlier, right? but I'm going to just show you very simple, very simple model here. Right. So we. This is something called a, um, it's just a pipeline, right? Some people call it DAG. Some people call it DAG, um, Director Acyclic Graph. It's basically a graph, but this one is straight. Sometimes it branches. So we have the stats, then we have some pre-processing, then we have training, then we have maybe other things like testing that goes on in the register step. All right, so let, let me just do a bit of the demo. All right, I'm going to stop present this. Am I still audible? Am I still live? Confirming.
Okay, just going to continue. All right, so um, here I have here I have a pipeline pipeline in YAML that contains um, a workflow. It's an example workflow. All right, so I'm going to just quickly explain this. So um, Agro workflows, like I said earlier, it's you write it in YAML. Right? So it consists of something called templates, and these te templates are like functions. Right. So the main thing in Agro workflows is templates, and templates are like functions, and these functions are the base are those steps in your pipeline. So we have a pre-process. We have first we have a product recommender function. It's like the entry point, right? And it's defined here. Then we have a pre-process step, a training step, and a register step. All right. So let's go to the entry point. In the entry point, we have something called a DAG. So the DAG is like a directed acyclic graph, right? So it's it's basically just a, the pipeline, right? And the this DAG has tasks and we have three tasks, the pre-process, the train, and the register. So like this is the main thing. Um, then other things are just like helping this one. So this task, um, the, the code or the instructions for it, that's the template is defined here. And for the training, we also have the template here and the register here, right? So, so I'm just going to go into a Kubernetes cluster that I set up on Azure. I, I'm going to SSH into uh, the VM I set up. And I'll start Minikube. Oh, Minikube starts. So while Minikube is starting, So Agro Workflows also has a uh, a dashboard, right? It has a dashboard. I'm going to open it up in a bit. Just Minikube will load up in a few seconds. Okay, we need to get started, All right? So, um, I've already deployed Agro workflows on this Kubernetes environment. That's this Minikube cluster. I'm just going to get the pod. So, click to here, get pod. Um, I deployed it on namespace Agro. All right, so we we don't have it running. We don't have the server running yet. It's actually restart them. So I think in a few minutes it's going to start fully. I just have to check. I have to check regularly. Right. So when it does that we can submit our workflow to it and it will run our workflow and we do all the processing. Right, so I'm just going to go back to the code and explain it a bit more. So when I said we do everything in terms of containers, right? So it means you're going to define all your processes in, in containers. So I have here, I have here the uh, Jupyter notebook that I did the, that try I got help from my friend. So we did the machine learning, um, the whole data processing and model fits in here right so what i did was to copy the code from here and transfer it to these folders right so these folders contain um contain the files that will be packaged into containers so each of the folder has its own docker file right so you would set up an automated pipeline that would build the containers that will be containers for each of the folders 
or each of the steps, right? So you build um, the containers and push it to your registry, whatever registry you want to push it to, or whatever the registry you're using, right? And when you do push it, the the workflow temp the workflow templates here is going to pull it's going to pull it so here i push them to docker push them to docker hub right so that's why you have this image here so you're going to pull these images from docker hub and run and run the containers basically right so let me just check with a minute if i started yeah so it has so it's running now so I'm just going to go here and I'm going to I'm going to um, SSH into the server or connect the server to my local. Yeah, I meant to. Sorry, I meant to. I meant to port forward it to. And that's what's forward there. So for some weird reason, it only runs on HTTPS. Right, so this this um, workflow I submitted earlier, right? So, but normally when you're submitting a workflow, you just maybe copy and paste or use an automated process. So let me open the this thing. Let me open it here. Sitting to this other, All right? So, if we copy this code and like create a workflow, so let's say nano product right com dot yaml right, and paste the workflow, then we submit it. We just use QTTL. Um, Submit on the namespace algo product recom dot yaml. And we can watch we can watch how the workflow runs. Right. Just copy it from Russian. Mm. So I have a type to here. So it's running now. Now we're running it in watch mode, right? So basically, it would run the first process, then run the other process. So we can actually check the dashboard, right? It's running the first, pulling the images, pre-processing the data, then running the training model, running the training container. Right, after that one is trained, it's going to run the register container or pod as they call it in Python. So any minute now it's going to complete. Right. So I didn't actually connect the front end interface, right, but I found something very similar. Um, done by a AD. Right, so the idea is like um, we have these products and when we do click on a product it's 
it's run through the model, through the train model. This our pipeline was is basically for training, right? We didn't like set up a pipeline for inference. But when you click on the model, it's it runs, it sends the image through, it sends the image through the trained model, then gives you recommendations and you like display the recommendations, right? So that's like the basic idea of running such a pipeline on Kubernetes. And Argo workflows, right? It's like it's like a bare basic, it's like the bare basic pipeline. It's like a very bare pipeline medium on Kubernetes. There's something even like say um, built on Argo workflows basically, and that's Qflow, right? So Qflow is usually like a, more of an end-to-end -end way of running machine learning pipelines or machine learning processes on Kubernetes, right? But it's still built on Argo workflows. So having knowing Argo workflows can be like a plus, right? You can apply the knowledge you're using in say machine learning pipelines to do CI C D on Kubernetes. So that's it basically, right? So um that's my talk. I guess we we'll have go for questions now. Awesome. Thank you so much for that session. If you have any questions for Aka, you can drop it in the chat. And um, while it's available to actually take your answers. All right, it seems like we don't have any questions for now. In the meantime, think of any questions, you can always refer back to the social media handle. Um, please drop it in the YouTube channel so we can always reach out to you. Yeah, you can always refer to um, Osinachi's social media handle and um, ask your questions on there. And you can always refer back to this recording if you're just jumping in. I think this is uh, the last session before break. Hooray, who's excited? Yes, yeah, so thank you so much, Osinachi, for that um, awesome session. It was good to have you here.